Hi, welcome to Senegal Dad. I'm Mark. Today we're going to be starting my station build on the layout here. So we're going to start by clearing these trains out of the way and then we'll have a look exactly what the plan and what we're going to do here. So this is the area I'm going to have my station. So I'm going to have a platform here, Central Island platform here, and then a platform here with the station building with entrance from a road here. Now, for the back of the layout, what I've made is this wooden structure, which is going to sit at the back there, be screwed into place. And along the top of that, I'm going to put a row of these low relief houses along the back with space for a rear access to the houses. And then I'm going to use the scale cast components for a retaining ball and using a scale cast platforms to construct it. So these will all be stuck onto here, uh, painted. This also allows me to do the wiring, so I can run a connection underneath here, because these houses are going to have lights in them. If you'd seen some of my live streams, you'd seen that I'd done um, some flicker lights to simulate people watching TV, open fires, that sort of thing. So I'll be doing those in there, and they'll all be wired in underneath here, along with lighting for the platform. So it means I can lift this whole unit out if I need to do any maintenance. For the platforms, I've got this piece of chipboard here. It's actually cut from an old bookcase. And it's actually the right height I want for my platforms. So I'll be using that to help form the platforms. So the scale cast platform will go on the top. The edging will be glued onto the sides, like so. And you'll see there, there's a small gap there. Uh, but that's going to be filled by ballast and won't be seen. So what I'm going to do next now is take these houses off of here, uh, glue the retaining walls onto the side, assemble the platforms, put them alongside, glue it all together, take it outside, give it a spray with some gray primer as an undercoat, and then do some detailing on the platform and the retaining walls. When I'm happy with that and have that done, then I can put the houses on top, do the wiring for the lights, create the back entrance road, put some fencing up. So that's going to be the next line of work. I've made this quite a sturdy um, baseboard. So if I do need to climb up there because it is three foot deep, so it's very hard to reach. So if I do get up on there, I have some old cushions that I put across the track so I can kneel on this without damaging the track to work. Here we have the pieces for the retaining wall. I've laid them out on here. Now, if you see them, there's some imperfections in them where they've been cast. They're slightly different thicknesses. So the way we get around that is I've covered the piece of wood here, this is the bit of wood they're going to go up against in cling film. And what we do is we lay them flat upside down so we can glue them together. So that way the front facing side will be one uniform flat surface. And then as I put them together, I can glue them together and then stick it, the whole unit, to the face. But before we do any gluing, we need to get a bit of sandpaper and just clean up the edges so they're all square. 
and the glue together all that bit better. So I'll carry on with that, glue them all together, and then we'll come back and have a look at it later. You can see the retainer wall, it's all glued together. I've used some strips of cardboard for added strength at the joints. And you can see it's sitting on top of the cling film there. The reason having that is any glue that drips through, it wouldn't stick it to the wood. So, because it's such a long piece now, I'm going to grab some help just to help me flip it over and put it in position and just see how it looks. There it is the right way around. I haven't glued it in place yet. I'm just seeing how it looks. The joints here will be disguised better. I'll go over them with a watered down version of uh, plaster. You paint that over, it fills in the cracks and dries off. There'll also be these buttresses going over them. Like so, so you won't see the gaps or the joints. And the platform will be going along the bottom, so you won't see where it doesn't reach all the way down. So I'm going to glue this in place, leave it overnight, let it dry, um, see how it looks in the morning. See if it'll stay in place. And once I'm happy with that, then I can get on, attach the platforms, and finally the buttresses, and give it a a coat of primer. As you can see, the retaining wall is now stuck. So now we'll start working on the platform. So for that I've got a piece of wood. This is just an old, as I said before, the old bookcase cut to size. And then on top of that I will stick the platform pieces, again from scale cast, and then the edging pieces like so. Again, I've got the cling film down, so any glue that drops down doesn't stick the unit to the baseboard here, because this obviously isn't the final position for it. Once all that's done, I'll add the buttresses, which will hide some of the gaps, and then I'll work to hide any gaps using a watered down solution of plaster, which I'll show you later on. So I'm going to glue all this together now, and then we can come back and see how it looks. Here we can see now the construction of the retaining wall and the platform is complete. I have along the top here started putting some filler in in the screw holes and some of the larger gaps that will need sanding down and cleaning up once it's dry. Now I need to work on some of the thinner gaps between the platform sections. And you can also see down here where I've put extra pieces to cover the gaps in the wall under the platform. You can also see on here how some of the pieces they haven't cast perfectly. Well, this will just all add to the, the weathering and the aging of the retaining wall. So hopefully I can pick some of that up in different shades of gray and some washes and some dry streaking just to pick it all out. So I'm gonna prepare a solution now and I'll show you how we fill in these smaller gaps. So to fill in some of the smaller gaps and cracks, I have a watered down solution here of plaster. So as you do this, you want to keep it agitating it so the plaster doesn't settle to the bottom and also that you don't get too much plaster on the brush. And you just take some of the solution and you just brush it over the cracks. And as you do this, the water will evaporate, leaving some of the plaster behind, slowly filling in the cracks. Now, usually you would have to do this two or three times just to get all the cracks filled how you want them. So I'll carry on and do this, and then we'll come back and look at the end result. You can see now, after going over them a few times with the watered down solution, how it's filled in some of the gaps don't want them all filled in completely because you can make a feature out of them of some of the cracks because we don't want it looking like a, a brand new platform 
It's got a good look, aged and weathered and well used. Um, I haven't got into too much detail with the casting all these. I have done videos on these before and I'll link those down below and on the end screen. So if you want to learn more about the scale cast stuff, just check those videos out. So we'll leave it there for today. Next time when we come back to this, we'll look at painting it. So as always, leave any comments or questions down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye for now.